Hello, I am Rachel Pan, Professor of Journalism at the College of Mass Communication of the University of the Philippines. Today, we'll talk about review of related literature. Back then, the RRL was known as the selection and annotation of available documents, both published and unpublished, which contain information, ideas, data, and evidence related to the topic that the person proposes to research on. These days, the RRL is seen as the use of ideas in the literature to justify the particular approach to the topic, the selection of methods, and demonstrate that this research contributes to something new. The review of the related literature is an important component of the research process and the research itself. In fact, for me, this is my first step as soon as I develop a general idea of the topic, the RRL actually helps you refine your topic and even refine your research question. There are two ways of looking at the RRL, from the point of view of the researcher and from the point of view of the reader. From the point of view of the researcher, we see that the RRL helps shape the research. Earlier studies can help you identify a research problem, broaden your knowledge in the research area, provide important clues or leads to help you determine the topic of inquiry, show what is already known versus what needs to be known, and provides the foundation and justification for your research problem. It also helps you in framing the valid research methodologies, approaches, goals, and the research questions for your study. It also provides clues or leads with regards to the theoretical framework and methodological approach. From the point of view of the reader, it provides the bigger picture. It shares with the reader the results of other studies that are closely related to the proposed study, relates the proposed study to the ongoing conversation on the topic, provides the reader a benchmark for comparing your study with other studies, and helps the reader identify and appreciate the value-added information of your study or in other words, what makes your study original. If we look at it from a systematic point of view, we look at the input, process, and output of the RRL. First comes your data gathering through journals, conference proceedings, and non-refereed materials, as well as dissertations and internet-based sources. This data you process to make your literature by describing and summarizing, analyzing and synthesizing, and evaluating the materials that you have found. But finally, when you come to write your RL, you exhibit the impact of the body of literature as a whole. What did you learn from the literature? Some tips in writing your RRL. You could use 3x5 index cards and already put your notations in APA style to make it easier for your references later on. Group together references from books, journals and periodicals, unpublished researches, newspapers and magazines. Now if you want to be completely digital, I suggest that you open up a different file, like a Word file, where you put all your notes separately in categories, also in APA style. Write notes to yourself about the article you're reading regarding issues, thoughts, or general comments, such as nice methodology or interesting definition. What to include in the review? Consider what materials are to be extracted from previous studies or journal articles. Potential points to be extracted are the problem being addressed, the central topic or purpose or theme of the study, information about sampling or the subject of the study. You could also review the key results and conclusion of the study. And finally, to look at the methodology and see its strengths or flaws. How to avoid plagiarism. First, review the literature, don't reproduce it. Refrain from copying verbatim what the authors or researchers say. Paraphrase the literature in your own words can also help you analyze the text, but make sure that you also put the source of that information. Make sure you include all proper citation of the text in your notes. 
Now, how far should you go? Just a step. The sky is not the limit. Provide parameters around your literature review so that you don't review ad infinitum. Parameters may be set through the variables or the type of research or the time frame. For example, if your study wants to focus on an analysis of foreign news content in local primetime news programs, then we have narrowed it down to primetime television as well as the news happening abroad. Characteristics of a good review are, first, the text of the review should be brief and to the point. To ensure brevity and conciseness, you have to summarize or paraphrase important points. Avoid direct quotations of the author's ideas or the results of the study you are reviewing. Second, have a plan on how you are to present the review. Prepare an outline before finally writing the review. This will ensure coherence and unity of ideas presented. The problem you are going to work on can serve as your outline for discussion of related literature and the studies that are relevant to your proposed research. Emphasize relatedness. Keep the reader aware of the manner in which the literature you are discussing is related to your problem. Try to point out what that relationship is. Review the literature, don't reproduce it. Refrain from copying verbatim what authors and researchers say. Critically review and discuss the literature in relation to your research work. How do you organize your RRL? I have a few or a couple of suggestions which you may or may not adopt, but the important thing is that there is some order, there is some logic to the way you organize your RRL. One suggestion is the chronological approach. The literature and studies are presented according to the year they were written. For example, after the introduction, you could put recent literature and studies, followed by the least recent literature and studies, and then the synthesis of your review. Another approach is thematic. Literature and studies with the same findings are grouped together. For example, after the introduction, the studies on re or related to the independent variable, and then studies on major dependent variables, and the synthesis of the review. And finally, the country of origin. Literature and studies are categorized based on the country or continent where they came from. For example, after the introduction, you have your foreign studies, then a section on local studies, then the synthesis of the review. Some things to remember when actually writing the review. It is in the introduction where you make your readers aware of your approach in presenting the related literature. For example, if you've chosen the country of origin approach, then you explain this in the introduction. It is in the synthesis, on the other hand, where you specify the uniqueness of your study vis-a-vis -vis the literature you had just discussed in the review. We hope that this helps you build your review of related literature. And now we shall talk about the research process, specifically forming the research question in the next presentation.